veto of the recharter of the Second National Bank was a positive example of Jackson's successes as president because it removed the unfair monopolies Nicholas Biddle put in place in order to corrupt the bank to benefit the wealthy elitists instead of democratically representing the people. People like to use the veto of the bank as one of the reasons why Andrew Jackson wasn't a good president, but their reasons and claims are faulted and not true. They like to say that President Jackson acted selfishly when he vetoed the recharter, but Congress only modified the recharter to help themselves with a 20 to 30 percent increase in their stocks. The rich and powerful people were the selfish ones. Rich men used Congress just to get richer, and stocks could only be afforded by the richest classes. Expensive stocks were given to men who could now, thanks to the recharter, stay in office for another 20 years like Nicholas Biddle. People like to say that President Jackson acted undemocratically, but the bank only benefited the wealthy stockholders. It created an unfair monopoly against farmers and workers. There was no competition and they refused to open a full market for the stocks. It was not fair to the poor people who didn't have time to get involved in the complex economics and politics to give them that additional social distinction. President Jackson was just trying to make equality in government because money was what gave class distinction. So he wanted to open it up so that people were being fairly represented, represented no matter what class they were. Some people like to say that President Jackson went against both houses and that was bad. But in Article 1, Section 7, Clause 2 of the Constitution, the President is given the right to refuse his signature, so he wasn't doing anything wrong. And other people like to say that he went against what people wanted. But opponents of Jackson's bank plan printed off 30,000 copies of his message to use as a ploy to get people to not like him in the election. But Jackson went on to win the election, so clearly it didn't work. The bank gave stockholders money taken from Americans, and who wants money taken from them? Banks and foreign stocks couldn't be taxed, so there had to be a 1% tax on domestic stockholders. So not only was President Jackson keeping the interests of the people who didn't have stocks in mind, but he was also trying to help the domestic stockholders by removing this burden of taxes that the bank was putting on them so they could give money to people that weren't even, weren't even in this nation. Also, people like to stick to the Constitution because when they created this nation, everyone agreed that those are the ideas and principles they want to live by. But banks were authorized nowhere in the Constitution and the bank was dangerous to the liberties of people stated in the Constitution. Stocks gave them a piece of government, and that power was stated nowhere in the Constitution. And whatever implied power the bank had, it is to manage real estate and the currency or credit. It invades the rights and powers of states by giving the federal government too much power. Some people thought the National Bank was good, because it protected the ups and downs of the national economy, but it didn't. It did not supply enough funds, and experience shows dangers have sprung from bank acts like these. In the crisis of 1837, that, can be, that could have been used as an example of why the bank was necessary, wasn't just caused by the bank veto. There were four main reasons. Two of them weren't even related to the bank. The first one was a species circular, which is when Jackson said that all land had to be purchased with a hard currency. But there was just a reduction of land sales, and that's why it led to depression. And England also limited cotton sales, so there was a reduction in trades and exports, so there was another reason for the depression. But the national debt and the fact that prosperity expanded too rapidly for the credit system were faults of the bank. The bank couldn't manage the national debt correctly, and they couldn't manage their credit system so that America could prosper. And instead, America was held back because the credit system couldn't manage itself, so America couldn't prosper. So Jackson was simply trying to remove the bank so America could prosper and move on like it was destined to do. So clearly, the veto of the recharter of the second national bank was a positive example of Jackson's successes as president because it removed the unfair monopolies Nicholas Biddle put in place in order to corrupt the bank to benefit the wealthy elitists instead of democratic democratically representing the people. And Jackson was not selfish. He was not undemocratic. He did not go against both houses. He did what the people wanted. He was constitutional. And he removed the bank 
which did not protect the ups and downs of the national economy and instead hindered the prosperity and expansion of America itself. 